All right, and we have the go ahead. Everyone, it is go time. Oh, okay. Oh, and Mr. appears to have collapsed. Oh, he's How about that? He is simulating yeah. having been oh, choked what am I here? Well, this is it, folks, the big event. This evening, one man will attempt to recreate the suicide of noted pedophile Jeffrey Edward Epstein. It will certainly be a feat like nothing the world has ever seen and could only be attempted by the undisputed superstar of Daredevils, Stephen Knieven Crowder. Stephen, tell the folks at home what they can expect to see tonight. Yeah, well, thanks, Audio Wade. I appreciate you doing a bang-up job. Uh, first... There, let me be clear, there are about one in a million details that we cannot go over or account for uh, in this experiment. But let me be the first to say, or let me say this first on the outset, the number that we are trying to hit on uh, that, was it, newtometer scale? My engineer's not here with me right now. It's 55 kilograms, 121 pounds of force. 55 kilograms, 121 pounds of force is what we're looking to hit to recreate a scenario in which Jeffrey Epstein's suicide is even plausible. It's even, even remotely possible, and that's the low end. Uh, keep in mind the story that we've been told, as you, you know from the New York Times, Washington Post, is that uh, Jeffrey Epstein knelt toward uh, the floor with enough force that he broke several bones in his neck on a rope that he fashioned himself from, um, from orange bedsheets. Some people thought the bedsheets were paper. That's not true. Apparently, they were actually uh, real bedsheets. Keep in mind, too, Something that uh, a lot of people may not know, that um, when administering death by hanging, the number to ensure death that has always been used historically is 1,000 to 1,250 foot-pounds of force. Now, why aren't you using that number, Stephen? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that in just a second. As and, I and isn't there something about the hyoid bone? Yeah. Uh, I'm glad that you, uh, you brought that up. Many in the media, they've tried to paint kind of people who are even remotely skeptical of the Epstein suicide as conspiracy theorists. And they often uh, point to the hyoid bone, claiming that Jeffrey Epstein fractured that bone. It only requires 35 pounds of force to fracture. And of course, that makes it seem as though it's very easy, very plausible, the most likely scenario uh, that Jeffrey Epstein hung and killed himself. I believe it's a red herring for several reasons. Couldn't be less relevant, uh, couldn't be less relevant to this for one. Uh, the measurement being cited that people are often using, this was in a laboratory where they took a hyoid from a cadaver and put it into a vice, right? And that's not the same as a real world scenario where you've got cartilage and tissue and neck fat, as, as I well know. Then number two, most importantly, Jeffrey Epstein had three fractures in his neck. And you will see us trying to recreate that here in a second. Three fractures, including thyroid cartilage, which is much more difficult to fracture than the hyoid bone. So let me kind of paint a scenario. If you get into a car wreck, right, you get, you get jostled around and you break your pinky, you break your wrist, but you also break your femur. Um, I can't just recreate a scenario where I break a pinky and say, well, that's good enough for me, call it a day. We need to recreate a scenario in which the most severe fracture is accounted for. And that is what we are trying to do uh, this evening, mimicking the force that will be required to create all three fat fractures that were found in the suicide. It's also important to note, uh, only 8% of victims, by the way, victims of hanging suicide uh, are found with, with broken hyoid bones. Keep in mind that these are suicides by hanging. They typically aren't kneeling, right? It's usually they're, they're brooksing themselves like in Shawshank, knocking the stool out and hanging from a beam in the ceiling. It's a dead I'm, I'm familiar. It's a great film. And by the way, very similar tonight, and we're gonna be crawling through miles of just to make this happen for you. So please use the promo code and uh, get your $20 off Mug Club so this will all be worth it. Earn this. Uh, something else that we need to keep in mind as well 8% have a fractured hyoid bone. When you go to the, the situation, the statistics of people who have three fractures that we saw in Jeffrey Epstein's suicide, that number drops to one in 20. Only one in 20 from dead hang suicides result in these three fractures. And how often is that kind of fracture found in homicides? 34%, yeah. So one could argue that these kind of fractures are more likely to occur in a homicide than in a suicide, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, however, though, uh, when we discussed this stunt with an engineer, as you well know, we've had engineers here helping with this project, wanting to be as fair-minded as possible, after reviewing multiple studies, he came to the conclusion that a real-world scenario, like we've created right here, um, in that scenario, about 121 pounds or 55 kilograms are what would be required at minimum to result in the three fractures sustained by Mr. Epstein. So we're aiming to achieve a far lower number than even necessary to ensure death by hanging because we want to be as, as fair-minded as possible and take the lowest number, the lowest barrier to entry, um, because we don't, know, we don't know how any of this is going to turn out. So now before the big stunt, let's go to the tail of the tape. Stephen Knieven has a distinct advantage in both height and weight, meaning that if Epstein wasn't able to produce the kind of force necessary to kill himself, Stephen may in fact be able to. 
we will certainly see how this affects the outcome of tonight's event. Uh, I do want to say, too, that the number on there is wrong in the tail of the tape. It's, uh, it's 219 now. I put on some LBs, but happens to the best of us. I'm Duly noted. Ready. Please. Please. All right, so Mr. Kneven is approaching the set. We do have trained paramedics standing by. And again, that number, folks, that we are shooting for is 55 kilograms we will be measuring at the neck as well as the tension of the rope. And it uh, looks like he is being fitted with a heart monitor, getting uh, that all set to go. We have the replica, again, of the orange bed sheets that will be wrapped around Mr. Knieven's neck. This, again, in line with exactly what uh, the exactly what Mr. Epstein would have experienced. We have the cell here, and uh, the, the sheet is about to be placed around uh, Mr. Knieven's neck. But first, his pupils are being checked there. All right, and again, we'll be measuring for 55 kilograms. 55 kilograms we'll be testing at the neck and on the tension of the rope. All set. All right, waiting for the go-ahead from Mr. Knieven himself. All set. All set. All right. All set. All right, and we have the go-ahead. Everyone, it is go time. Again, 55 kilograms is what we will be looking for on the rope and at the neck. He is leaning. We have 22 neck. at the rope. We have, let's see, yes, 28 on the neck. 22 on the rope. 22 on the rope, a steady 22. It switched to pants. Okay, hold on. Oh, we, uh, okay. We're, get, we're getting the signal to stop. Okay. We're getting the signal right, to stop. We need stop. to switch this. Sorry, something went wrong. What do we have on the rope? 22 on the rope. The rope is kilograms. Achieved. We're good. Are we able to achieve? Okay. So one thing I want to I want to note. Um, this is the most important measurement audio weight, but this is probably the least accurate device that we have. So this is designed because the compression at the neck is going to be dispersed around the neck. The number is going to be lower than this uh, monitor right here directly on the cord. So you'll notice that the number is significantly lower at the neck, significantly higher at the cord. The real life number is probably between those two. But even then, uh, leading, well, we got to 22 kilograms? 22 kilograms. Okay. 22. I'm going to try this again. Uh, and I think, I think that I can actually, hold on one second, I think I can actually get this pretty close. Um, in the spirit of, of being fair-minded, I think I can get this pretty close. I All think set. I can do it. Okay. All right, Mr. Ready? appears to be ready. All set on both. Waiting for the signal from him. All right, and we have the signal all set to go. We have Mr. Kneven leaning again. Again, this is go time, putting his foot against the bed. He's pushing. We have 16.1 at the neck, 37 at the neck, 38 on the rope, 38 on the rope, 23 as a high on the neck. We have, again, we are shooting for 55 kilograms. We are not even okay. close. 41 is the peak right. on the rope. What's again, the, the signal to stop. 41 on the rope. 41 on the rope, what do we have on the neck? 23 was the high on the neck. Okay, so the high, it's 23 kilograms on the neck, 43 on the rope, which is the best that we've had. I don't know if you guys could see, I was pressing up against the bed. Of course, I probably have more friction on a plywood panel here than he would have in a prison. Uh, we got pretty close. Um, I want to explore every option here. And, uh, and, and do everything I can to see if we can actually hit this number. And I actually, I do think that I could probably hit this number if, uh, if I really push it. I just need a little bit of time to catch my breath. That was, that was 44? It's 44 and 22 on the, on the rope. Yep. Okay. 22 on the neck. 22 on the neck. All right. So on the neck, that's not even close. No, not even close. But the rope was close. The rope was close. So the real number is probably somewhere in the 30s. Yes. Okay. Which means you're still alive. All right. We have the sa we have everything the safety mechanisms that we need. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, two. Perfect. Okay. Good. Good. All right. All right. Let's get uh, let's get the meters set. Let me know when we're good. I'm gonna go for one last try. All clear. All set. Ladies and okay. gentlemen, Mr. Kniven is going for one last try. We are all set to go, and we have the signal. As Mr. Kniven leans, we can we again we are looking for 55 right, kilograms. 13. We have 20, 25 on, on, what if I 25 on the rope. Oh. Okay. Oh, and Black Mr. Kneeven appears to have collapsed. Oh, he's How about that? he is simulating having yeah. been choked out. What am I out. here? 20, yeah. Again, we, we have peaked again at what if I go, hold on. 25 what if I go like this? on the rope. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, Jill, Jill, you have to wheelbarrow okay. me. Okay, okay. You have to wheelbarrow me. Mr. Crowder, yeah, boy, here we go. Requesting a wheelbarrow move. 55. 
56! Uh, oh, 56! We got achieved 56 go. on the neck and 58 go. on the road. You're out. You're out. Oh, man. Ah! Mr. Crowder is rolling. Mr. Crowder is being addressed by the men of the Again, the high on that was 62, which is far beyond Lewis. what is necessary to fracture There's the neck cartilage. Tally. 58 on the neck. 58, 58 the on the neck. Bear with me. Mr. Crowder again has collapsed. He right. is. He appears to be okay. Mr. Crowder appears to be Wait, okay. Check my pupils. Let me just check my pupils. He, he is requesting to be checked in the pupils. 62.9. 62.9 on the rope. My goodness, we are testing the limits here. Mr. Kniebens is approaching now. Okay, hold on. Audio wait. Oh. I don't think I've ever felt so alive. I have felt more alive, but this, uh, I mean, it's painful. Uh, painful, but I don't think I would suicide it. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, there appears to have been a lot of commotion over there. What do you think Hold went on, wrong? Let me fix my cape. Uh, please, please. Okay. What were you asking? Hold uh, on, let me get this off. There, I want to take my helmet. Thank you. Yes, there appears to have been a, a lot of commotion. What, what do you think went wrong? Um, good question. I'm still a little fuzzy. Uh, I think a better question is what went right. Uh, it seemed like everything uh, kind of went wrong there. Um, the meter was uh, uh, maladjusted to pounds uh, initially, and that's what we were getting. I thought there was too much of a discrepancy. Mm. We're we were kind of expecting it to be not as heavy on the neck because, of course, there wouldn't be as much from the compression, heavier on the cord. I heard those first numbers out there. I panicked. I thought maybe we had a calibration wrong. It just turns out that one of them reset to pounds. Mm. So that went wrong. Um, and I've had to question some life decisions that have led me to this point, audio weight. Well, Mr. Kniven, uh, the viewers have to know, do you believe that Jeffrey Epstein could have killed himself? Oh, boy, that's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, well, I'll say this. For everyone watching, what we really set out to achieve tonight was to hopefully show you a real-world scenario where what we've been told about the Jeffrey Epstein death uh, doesn't seem to have been entirely accurate. I certainly leave you even like we didn't even talk about the hyoid bone, but we passed that really easily. Could have done that without the neck brace. It's obviously uh, that's not the number that people should be concerned about. What we set out to prove was um, that people who are skeptical at all doesn't mean that you're a crazy conspiracy theorist. I think your criticisms are valid. And uh, we wanted to put on a show, hopefully give you the ability to draw your own conclusions and, uh, and give you one hell of a discount, which, uh, you know, we have offered tonight uh, with the promo code Epstein at lateralcreditor.com slash mug club. And uh, you're you're. You're signing up tonight continues to fund uh, episodes like this. I'm really just buying time because I, I, I've had to think it through. I, I will say this. I will say this. In, in the spirit of trying to be uh, fair and as objective as possible, if Jeffrey Epstein uh, had been able to fashion a rope from bed sheets, uh, which takes uh, approximately 9 to 15 minutes going completely unnoticed in his cell, uh, and if he were able to achieve the exact right angle and uh, have somebody wheelbarrow him in his cell, potentially a cellmate, uh, and if he were able to do that and snap his neck before he passes out, as that only takes you know about three to five seconds, as we know, considering the tension, um, and all the guards fell asleep, I think it is. I think it's, it could be possible. It could be possible. If all of those conditions are met, and those conditions would need to be met, um, I was trying with everything I had by myself. Um, I wasn't able to hit that number. I do think that uh, in, in being objective, it is, a, it is a possibility as to whether it's the most likely scenario people will have to, uh, people will have to decide for themselves. <sighs> well, there you have it, folks. Perhaps we'll never know what really happened that fateful night. That's it for us. Again, be sure to tweet using the hashtag Epstein didn't kill himself and go to louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club and enter promo code Epstein for $20 off. Thank you for joining us and good night. You guys say one thing? Sweetheart, we did it. I love you. I love you. <laughs>